Well, joining me live now is former Labor Senator Graeme Richardson. Richard, good to see you. In her statement on the appointment of Mark Binskin as the special advisor who will investigate the deaths of aid workers in Gaza, Foreign Minister Penny Wong said the Australian government has been clear that we expect full accountability for these deaths. Now, I know mostly this is about making sure the IDF investigation is transparent, but do you think that the Australian government could ever bring a case against Israel in, say, the International Court of Justice like South Africa did in late December or the International Criminal Court for the soldiers who executed the attack? No, I can't imagine Australia doing that. You know, Israel has been a, an ally of Australia forever. Um, we were there when it started in '48, uh, and we've been there in every war since. Uh, I can't see that changing. Do you think that, you know, the, uh, late December is when South Africa went to the International Court of Justice and the Australian government at that time said, no, we're not, we're not getting involved with that. But do you think since then, in the few months that we've had, we're now six months into this war in Gaza with Israel, have attitudes significantly changed in the Australian government towards the war? I doubt it. Um, I, I really do. Uh, I think when, when you've had a relationship uh, as we've had with Israel for the best part of 50 years, uh, it's not going to change uh, in, any, uh, you know, in any great hurry. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it can't change in many respects. Um, you know, we are tied together and we'll stay together. What happens, though, if Mark Binskin comes back and says, I'm not happy with, with what is happening and the, the Australian government is not happy with, with his response of what he's found out over there. I mean, what do you think could happen? Well, I mean, you can have uh, periods of strain in relationships, as we've had with China in, in uh, more recent years. Uh, you know, things go up and things go down. Um, but fundamentally, uh, we will always be an ally of Israel's. Uh, now, Israel can, uh, I suppose, play the game of pushing that to the absolute limit. Um, but that wouldn't be very smart for them. Uh, because the whole world is watching. Uh, and they, they have to remember that, you know, someone like Biden's patience can run out. Uh, so I, I doubt very much uh, that we're going to have to worry, you know, a, a great deal about this. I think it'll blow away. Let's go to the supermarkets. We, we just heard um, Treasurer Jim Chalmers give a press conference on the interim report that's been handed down by Dr Craig Emerson. It's due in July. The review of the supermarket code of conduct is ongoing, but some initial recommendations, which are supported in principle by the government, including uh, it does not support a forced divestiture power to address market power issues in supermarket industry. So the Coalition and Greens were keen to put a big stick approach to this, but there are concerns about having you know, the job losses and having stores close down, close down and therefore people having to travel further to get groceries. Mm. Nationals leader David Littleproud, he says he's disappointed it's been ruled out and Craig Evanson rejected it, saying it's populist. Do you think that there's any merit in, in what the Coalition and the Greens are asking for when it comes to market dominance by the supermarkets? Oh, look, I, I, I think there are just some things you're not going to change. Uh, you've got Woolworths, you've got... Coles, uh, you have little, uh, you know, competition from Aldi, but it's minor. Uh, no, I don't think much will change at all. Uh, I, I think governments have always wanted it to change. Uh, it's been talked about ever since I got into politics, but nothing's been done, and I doubt that any governments can have the real courage to do it. Just finally, while I've got you, Richard, Opposition Home Affairs spokesman James Patterson says he is very concerned with the latest illegal maritime arrival to reach Australia and that the abolition of temporary protection visas have sent the wrong message to people smugglers and potential asylum seekers. Do you agree with that? I think um, I'd just say one boater summer doth not make. Um, uh, no, I, I don't think that we're, we've got any evidence to back that up yet. Um, but I think Patterson's right in the sense that we should be ever vigilant of this. We don't want a repeat of what's happened in the past. We don't want all these leaky boats lobbing onto our shores or people dying at wharves trying to get off them in, in uh, stormy weather. We just don't want to see that anymore. I, I was horrified by what I saw when that did happen. And I don't, I don't want to see it again. I'm sure there's no Australian who wants to. So it's, it's just something that we have to be ever vigilant for. Graeme Richardson, so good to talk to you. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, King.